We need to talk about Nate Oates and this Alabama basketball situation. And for those of you who don't know, 23-year-old woman named Jamia Harris was killed in Tuscaloosa last month by a bullet from a gun owned by former Alabama forward Darius Miles. There are facts that we know, and there are facts that are going to be left up to a jury to decide. And here is what we know, though. Three Alabama basketball players were at the scene of the shooting. Darius Miles, Brandon Miller, and Jaden Bradley. Miller and Bradley are both freshmen and were not charged with any crime. Both have continued to play for Alabama for the last month, with Miller being the leading scorer in the SEC. Now, the person that fired the gun that killed Jamia Harris was a friend of Darius Miles from Maryland. His name is Michael Davis. And Michael Davis was also shot in the exchange of gunfire. Davis claims that Cedric Johnson, who was Jamia Harris's boyfriend, fired first and that his killing of Harris was an accident that happened in self-defense. And we know that the Tuscaloosa police disagree and believe that Michael Davis fired first at the instructions of Darius Miles. And we also know that Cedric Johnson and Michael Davis had a verbal conflict when Davis danced in front of Johnson's park Jeep on the Tuscaloosa Strip. We also know that Darius Miles then texted Brandon Miller, who had dropped them off at a sports bar earlier in the evening, to bring the loaded gun that Miles left in his back seat to the scene of the shooting. Darius Miles allegedly helped Michael Davis retrieve the gun from Brandon Miller's car. And then we know that Jamia Harris, a young mother with a promising future, is tragically dead for no good reason. Now, the Tuscaloosa police have stated that Brandon Miller delivering Miles' gun to him is not something that they are going to pursue charges on. They also decided that Jaden Bradley isn't culpable in this case. And actually, a fourth Alabama player, Jaden Quinterly, isn't facing charges for the weapon being found in his bedroom because he wasn't even in town. And that brings us to earlier this week when members of the Alabama media asked head coach Nate Oates about Brandon Miller, the leading scorer in the SEC and the nation on the nation's number two overall team, delivering a weapon to the scene of a murder. And here's what Nate Oates had to say. Can't control everything everybody does outside of practice. Nobody knew that that was going to happen. College kids are out and about. Brandon hasn't been in any type of trouble, nor is he in any type of trouble in this case. Well, Oates went on to say that Brandon Miller was in the wrong spot at the wrong time. As you can imagine, with such a senseless death, that is not going to go over well. People aren't handling it well at all. And Oates had to issue an apology saying later that we were informed by law enforcement of other student athletes being in the vicinity and law enforcement has repeatedly told us that no other student athletes were suspects. They were witnesses only. Our understanding is that they have been fully truthful and cooperative. And in no way did I intend to downplay the seriousness of the situation or the tragedy that night. My prayers continue to go out to Jamia Harris's family. And then Brandon Miller's lawyer subsequently issued a statement saying that his client had no idea the gun would be used in a crime and that he never actually handled the gun himself. So Nate Oates clearly screwed up here with both his flippant words and insensitive tone. But based upon the facts that we have right now, things can change if new information comes out. And unless we're making an assumption about Brandon Miller's culpability Despite the Tuscaloosa police saying that he's not a, not legally to blame, we have to understand that this is a coach's poorly phrased attempt to protect a second member of his team from being painted as a premeditated murderer. If he was really caught up in a bad situation, I feel bad for Brandon Miller. What the hell are you supposed to do when your older teammate asks you to Uber him his piece? Miles told him to bring the gun because uh, ends was faking, which means Miller could have interpreted that as Miles being in danger. And we have learned time and time again, and that in this country, some of its citizens are free and clear to stand their ground. And if he thought his friend was in danger, I mean, th th this is America. People are free to own weapons. You might be saying to yourself right now, I would never be in a situation where I was out on the, on the town on a Saturday night with a weapon or even hanging out with anybody who had a weapon. 
And to that, I'd say, is there anywhere in this country where you can go to a bar on a Saturday night and somebody isn't packing on their person or in their car? You can't even go to high school or college or the grocery store or even church with the guarantee that things won't pop off. And what's that NRA saying? The only person that can stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Was Cedric Johnson the good guy in this case because people are saying that Michael Davis fired first? Is it a good thing that Johnson had a gun to defend himself and a bad thing that Darius Miles, who was raised by a police officer, also had a gun? Are good and bad only defined by the outcome? There's a lot more to sort through than there are simple John Wayne fantasies that America is supposed to be. What you can do in this situation, if you have kids, is take time to have a conversation about this. Do they know how to use a firearm? Do any of their friends legally or illegally own a firearm? Have they ever heard of their acquaintances leaving the house with a firearm? What do you do in a situation where tempers flare and attitudes escalate and there are weapons around? I asked my 17 year old son and it was a pleasant surprise to hear him say, if you're headed out somewhere and you feel like you might need a gun, maybe that's not a place where you need to be. And I guess that's what makes Nate Oates comment. So disappointing. You can't control every minute of every player's day, but in this day and age, they have to know that you're the type of person that will respond with wisdom. If they are in a tricky situation, which is what he didn't do. And you definitely can't be a college coach in America with if you're not having preemptive conversations about guns, gun violence, and situational de-escalation. Now, there is public pressure to retroactively hold Brandon Miller accountable. South Carolina fans already chanted, lock him up during one of their recent games. And the idea of fans turning a young woman's death into a game-time taunt It is something that we will look back on with pure disgust. And on the other side, Nate Oates and Brandon Miller absolutely have to be on the same page and understand that every single thing that Brandon Miller does for the rest of the season is going to be under the world's most intense microscope. Of course, the pat down Miller and teammates do during introductions is insane given the circumstances. And while I don't think that Miller was doing anything more than an MMA officials greasing frisk, you see it before every single UFC fight. It comes off looking like a damn weapons check and doing anything to make people associate weapons. And Brandon Miller is not the move. Alabama's athletic director, Greg Byrne, is no stranger to scandal. Ask any U of A, that's University of Arizona fan, where Baird came from. And they'll tell you that after massive scandals involving the basketball, football, and track programs in Tucson during his tenure, that they're surprised that he was ever poached by Tuscaloosa in the first place. I don't know what the right thing for Alabama basketball is at this point, but I do agree with Nate Oates and Brandon Miller was in the wrong spot at the wrong time. But it wasn't that he was out with a gun owning college friend in a college town in America on a Saturday night. Wrong spot at the wrong time might be that he ever chose to play for Nate Oates at a Greg Byrne run Alabama in the first place. Let that sink in.